Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, welcome to SASNet Windows 10 Edition, or Windows 10 SASNet Edition, or Windows 10 SASNet Lite Edition. I'm not really sure. It's named a whole bunch of different things on the actual devs website. So let's take a look at this operating system and see what it actually brings to the table and whether or not it's something that you could cleanly run in your infrastructure. And I use that term loosely because it says that it's the clean version of Windows 10. So let's see what that actually means. So as always, I'll do the installation process and we will see if there's anything different. So during the installation process, we only have the option for Windows 10 Pro. So that kind of rules out if you're going to attempt to run this operating system on your Windows 10 home system, you would have to go through the command line logic to actually change the license key so that way you can run the home version with this particular ISO. And if you guys are interested in knowing how to do that, let me know in the uh, comments and I can show you how to do that. Hey guys, so this is the first look that we get at this operating system for Windows 10 SASNet Edition. This particular system is marketed as the Light Edition. He also has one called the Black Edition. We'll take a look at both of those. But for the Light Edition, um, I'm just taking a look specifically at the screen, first time seeing it just as you. Let's get VM tools installed on this thing. Let's reboot it, and then let's jump back into it and continue to take a look. Okay, so our OS is back up and running. And as usual, what we'll do is we'll jump into our control panel here. And let's start, I guess, with the firewall on this particular system. Since we did the SASNet XP machine and the firewall was disabled. Okay, so it's not disabled, so that's good news. Although it does look default. We do have the file and print sharing stuff turned off. And it looks like we also have Defender stuff disabled. So I'm not sure yet as to what we got going on. Let's jump into the Allow an App Through and see specifically what we got. So we do have the uh, default configuration for our uh, camera software to allow it through the firewall. Not a fan of that. We have the uh, Diag Track, which is the diagnostic tracking system for uh, remote access into the system. Um, network Discovery is turned on. A recommended troubleshooting is enabled. We don't have the remote desktop enabled. We don't have, it doesn't appear that we have remote assistance enabled. Everything looks pretty much standard. It doesn't look like we have anything added to it. We do have a couple things removed, which is kind of nice, but we don't have anything added. All right, so let's jump into add remove programs. We just have the Visual Studio stuff from the uh, VMware tools installed. We have the older version of VM uh, or .NET installed on it instead of just the 4.8. The remote API support is enabled. And that's about it. There's not really much on here, so it does look like some of the fat's been trimmed out of the actual operating system. Now keep in mind, with the fat that's been trimmed, chances are file services won't work and you won't be able to print. But assuming that you're going to use this operating system for gaming, probably don't know, need those things enabled anyway. Let's take a look at the actual overhead of the operating system. Running two cores, using 1.1 gigs of memory. So based on just a core operating system out of the box, this machine uses about 100 megs less memory than your vanilla Windows 10 system would use. But keep in mind that we also don't have a full operating system here. We're missing features that would be installed on the full operating system. Let's see if this, uh, Defender is installed on this thing. Okay, so it is running... Huh. It's 
interesting. So we have no way to get to update and security right now because the system's not activated and it can't activate the system. So let's reset the license key on the system with the SLMGR and then rearm it so that way we get our three day trial. So if you don't know, it's just run it as admin. It's SLMGR space forward slash rearm. We'll have to reboot the system and hopefully that'll allow us to get back into the settings features so we could take a look at the rest of the controls on this actual system. So interestingly, uh, well, maybe not so interestingly, is it didn't work. And the reason why is because the system, for whatever reason, is set up to use a KMS for its actual uh, license key. So there are ways that you could use uh, command logic to actually clear that and convert the operating system into the actual pro version and not the version that's using the KMS for the actual update. So at this point, I'm not even going to bother with that. We can't get into the security to see the update configuration. However, we should be able to go uh, an additional step in the actual operating system and see what revision and updates are actually applied. So we can see in our configuration on this particular machine that we are on VMware. We have 853 megs of page file in use. 8 gigs of physical memory allocated. For whatever reason, we don't have our system set for work group, but rather we change the name to Windows for our logon server. Um, I don't believe. Yeah, so it's 22H2. I can rename the system. Let's see what's we got. Yeah, so we're in work group mode. Computer name is Windows, and we're in work group mode by by SASnet. So if you were on our home network and you wanted to access this system not using work group, you'd have access issues. But the OS is I don't know. It looks like somebody attempted to do some kind of security by obscurity configuration versus actual security. So I think at this point, the best thing that we could do for this operating system is let's give it an IP address. Let's scan it with Nessus and see what it comes back with. So our SASNet system is currently scanning for our Windows 10 system. And I just want to point out that our vanilla version of Windows 10 had 24 infos. So we should see 24 infos or 23 infos and one medium if this machine had the SMB3 enabled, but I don't believe it does. So that is our goal on this particular operating system is to meet that number. Okay, so our SASnet Lite Windows 10 edition scan just finished. And again, a typical out-of-the-box Windows 10 machine is going to be roughly 23 infos and one medium if the SMB version 3 is enabled. If it's not, it's going to be 24 infos. That's what we're going to see. That's what we should expect. So let's jump into our Windows 10 SASnet Lite and see how that compares. Well, uh, terribly. So we have one high, one medium, and 57 info. So 57 configuration problems. An additional one medium, which I'm assuming is probably our SMB signing one. And then one high, which I actually don't know what that is. So once we drill into this, we can see we do have the SMB signing one for the medium, which means that we do have SMB version 3 enabled somewhere in the operating system, even though we can't see it. And then we have insecure Windows service permissions which we could see on our configuration, the modified date for the actual uh, CVE report or CVSS is from May 18, 2023. And our published version is from March 6, 2013. So this has existed for a while. It's part of the actual W search, which is ironic because the search function is disabled in this version of Windows. So it appears that even though they disabled it, they didn't fix the security vulnerability before disabling it. So once again, we're left in the same situation we're usually left in with these homebrew systems is we're not getting any performance increase as far as the utilization is concerned. We're actually running at about the exact same as what we would from a vanilla Windows 10. We have far worse security configuration than we would out of the box Windows 10. And it really doesn't give you anything over running just the out of the box Windows 10 configuration. So before we button this up, figured we'd take a look to see just the size of the actual operating system. So roughly we're saving about maybe five gigs of storage. Obviously not really that 
big of a deal when we're talking like hundreds of gigs of hard drive space when you're doing a fresh installation of a Windows operating system. I really just don't see the point or purpose of this particular OS. Uh, much like the rest of the Windows 10 systems we've reviewed, if you're going to run a Windows 10 system, just run the out-of-the-box system. So far, none of these homebrew systems, the Ghost system, the, uh, the Integral Windows 10 system, the uh, X-Lite Windows 10 system, this particular SASNAT Windows 10 system, all of them perform worse than the vanilla copy. With the exception, obviously, of course, being Ghost 20H2, which that did perform well. So if you're going to run the Windows 10 homebrew version, Ghost 20H2 is your go-to. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos. I'll keep these series rolling. If you guys have any uh, suggestions for any new homebrew systems you want me to check out, just add the comments down below, and as I see them, I will find those systems, and we'll run the scans. Thanks again for watching.